Martin Truex Jr. very upset after Denny Hamlin's pit crew steals a win at the end of this race. And what in the world was race control doing tonight? Let's talk about NASCAR on Easter Sunday under the lights at Richmond Raceway. Hello everybody, welcome to Dirty Air. I'm your host Alex Lambert and let's talk about NASCAR under the lights at Richmond where Denny Hamlin is able to steal the win away from Martin Trucks Jr. on pit road in the closing laps on an overtime restart, the first overtime restart of this season to get the win. And we're going to take a look at NASCAR's race control or some of the officiating calls tonight because that definitely is a point of concern after some questionable calls and we'll, we'll certainly break that down get into all that. We did have our first ever oval race on rain tires or I should say wet weather tires tonight in Richmond. We'll break that down as well. Let's go ahead and get into all the action that happened tonight on Easter Sunday. And we have to start out with the finish of this race. Danny Hamlin is able to take the win away on pit road for Martin Truex Jr. after Truex essentially dominated a large majority of this race. You had Larson leading early, then Truex leading in the later stages of the race, the second half of the race. It looked like this race belonged to Truex. You had that final run there. It was, you know, the last 20 laps or so. You, you know, can Hamlin catch Truex? Can, can Logano catch Truex for the win? They were gaining on him a little bit with lap traffic, but in the end, you knew that Truex was going to come home the winner. That all changed with two laps to go when Bubba Wallace ran into Kyle Larson on the front straightaway. Kyle Larson spun, resulting in a yellow flag, a caution, which means there will be an overtime restart since the leader did not take the final lap, the white flag. So we had our overtime restart, our first overtime restart of the 2024 season, seven races in, which is very contrary to what we saw a year ago. Remember, it was I think, what was it, the first three races with overtime restarts or something crazy like that? So very contrary to what we saw a year ago, which once again, you don't want too many overtime restarts, right? You know, you too, cake is good, but too much cake is, you know, can make you sick, right? So you don't want these every week. So I think getting to the seventh race is a little bit of a relief from what we had a year ago as far as overtime restarts. But anyway, we had our overtime restart. Martin Trex Jr. is uh, it, it dominated the race essentially. Pit crew sales on pit road. Denny Hamlin's pit crew capitalizes. Martin Trex Jr. falls to second place. I believe that put Kyle Larson in third place after the, the, the pit road, uh, coming off of pit road. And then you had Denny Hamlin ultimately become the leader, which is once again contrary to what we've seen in the past, right? How many times have we seen Denny Hamlin's pit crew kind of cost him a race? You go back to multiple Martinsville races over the, the, the last couple of years in the next gen era, uh, where track position is so key at short tracks. Denny Hamlin has definitely lost a few races on pit road, multiple races I can think of on pit road very recently especially at the short tracks, but today that pit crew was able to back him up, and Denny Hamlin said in his post-race interview that he's glad that, you know, he, he has pounded his pit crew before, but today he gave him props. You know, he said he's glad that he has a pit crew he knows can back him up and get him race wins, and right now in NASCAR, pit road is probably more important than it has ever been in the NASCAR Cup Series which is certainly important. And Martin Trex Jr., after this race, he was not happy. Ran into the back of Denny Hamlin following the checkered flag. Ran into Kyle Larson following the checkered flag. Now, you can take a look at the finish here. This is two laps to go, overtime restart. Uh, Denny Hamlin, uh, Truex thinks that Hamlin run him a little high there. I, I, I don't see anything too crazy. I don't see anything out of line. I, I think Denny Hamlin, you have to race. I mean, you can't just you know give, let him pin you at the bottom. Uh, but in the corner, I mean, he was right on the line in the corner on the painted line. Uh, ran him up maybe a little bit on the restart on the front stretch, but I didn't see anything outrageous. You know, you have to put this in the driver's hands, right? I mean, what did they see? Because they're the ones in the car. Truex, obviously, at least right after the race, didn't think uh, that, that it was a okay move or was a little upset with the move. Uh, and then Denny Hamlin obviously thinks it's okay. And you know, once again, now Truex dominated this race and was on the losing end. So he's going to be frustrated with no matter what the situation is, right? So we, we have to keep that in mind. But, you know, this is just up to the drivers. You know, what did they think? We know Truex is a very clean race car driver. Driver. Very rarely does he like to move somebody up or, or rough them up at all. Uh, so that's sort of his perspective. Denny Hamlin, you know, he'll move somebody, you know, he'll run them really hard. But, you, you know, it's just whatever perspective that you want and in whatever you see uh, you know, from a driver's standpoint. But Denny Hamlin ultimately went on to win the race. Once again, track position was very key tonight, uh, especially for the lead in that clean air. And one thing I do want to talk about is race control because it was dirt certainly uh, a little sketchy tonight. Once again, if I go to that final restart, Truex mentioned this as well, Kevin Harvick in the booth mentioned it too, that jumping the restart is against the rules. And if you look here, you're going to see two white lines, and I'm sure most fans realize this now, but you cannot accelerate until you get into that restart zone. Now, once you get into the restart zone, the leader picks when to accelerate, right? And now the second place driver could not pass the leader in that restart zone, but that's not what happened. Denny Hamlin cannot accelerate until he gets into the, into that box, the restart zone, 
And it looks like Denny Hamlin accelerated a pretty decent while before he got to that restart zone. It was not reviewed by NASCAR. I don't even know if NASCAR really should have handed out this penalty. It, it really, to me, from what I see, it looks like it. You know, NASCAR officials and all that are a little more in depth. They, they know a little bit more about these race cars and such and have more, you know, access than, than, than the regular fan would. But man, I, I think that should have at least been reviewed, right? I hope that's not something NASCAR completely missed. Maybe there's a, a explanation or something that, that we would get later. But Seems like a missed call looking at it from right here. I mean, really looks like Hamlin accelerated fairly early, uh, which I think at least should have been reviewed, right? I mean, at least let's take a look at this, make sure this is fair because, you know, jumping the restart with two laps to go at a short track is a massive advantage to the leader, right? So uh, certainly upset that, that that race control didn't at least review it from what I can see. Um, another main point of concern was was you know at the beginning of the race we started on wet weather tires and and nascar throws a caution this is a set rule going into the race you know you throw a caution when you go from from wet weather to, to dry weather uh, i think that's something we might need to, to adjust I, I don't know if we need the caution you know it's kind of come in at your own risk i, I don't mind it either way but it's something to look at right uh, not really an officiating or race control problem the problem would be the cautions we had long periods of caution per uh, incident right you know we had the caution switch from dry to wet, which is not a common occurrence. Caution took a long time. I think it was at the end of one of the stages, we had a driver get spun around. Long caution. I mean, like 20 minutes of caution. We got to speed up these cautions. Uh, they, they are very frustrating at, at, at points in the race, especially, at the, you know, to start out the race uh, due to wet weather. So, you know, certainly that's not the massive problems. I heard some people that didn't like the call at the end uh, where, where you know, Bubba got into Larson and Larson kept going. Does that really need to be a caution? You know, I mean, obviously it was a little more entertaining, but did we need to see that caution? Once again, I'm not super furious about that because I can understand, you know, you have a car coming uh, to the inside wall, right? You know, maybe you need to throw a caution for that. But I can understand why some fans are thinking, you know, that's the car that finished third two laps later, right? So do we need a caution for that? I mean, I, I understand that argument. It's just kind of whatever you see from a fan perspective, and, and hopefully NASCAR goes back and looks at this as well. The real strange caution was in the middle of stage two, while we had strategy going on, I mean, we had an interesting strategy situation going on. Kyle Busch touches the wall gently, doesn't even tear his car up. I don't even know if he had to pit after that. I mean, he did for tires, but I don't know if he would have had to if it wasn't for that. Caution for that. I mean, it took the commentator booth. They didn't know what the caution was for for, for a few minutes. And that's too much. We, we don't need... If a car touches the wall, right, we, we don't need a caution for that. That gives me Texas All-Star Race 2022 vibes, right, where we had a caution at the end of the race because a car tapped the wall and it, you know, jacked the whole race up. That was a race control nightmare, right? So this wasn't as bad as that, but certainly some key points. I mean, why are we throwing cautions for cars hitting the wall? Uh, do we need cautions if we if we don't have any debris on the track or we don't have any driver that needs medical potential medical assistance? So, yeah, certainly want to look at that, right? Uh, definitely a point of conversation after tonight. I would say it was not the brightest, not the easiest race to officiate either. NASCAR was put into some boxes, but certainly not the brightest night for NASCAR race control. So just wanted to mention that. Let's talk about more about the racing drivers themselves, right? I, I pick my top three drivers every week, and obviously the top one's going to be Martin Truex Jr. Led the most laps tonight, essentially dominated the race. Very upsetting for Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr., and it was really just unfortunate circumstances for him. The set rule is overtime. I can't really bash NASCAR for throwing the caution, at least from what I see, because you did have a car spinning towards the inside wall, uh, but just really unfortunate there. Pit crew wasn't able to do it, but from the driver's standpoint, I mean, what do you tell Martin Truex Jr.? You dominated the race. You set your car up perfect. You did everything right to get another Richmond win, and you're sitting in fourth because of a two-race, two-lap shootout, right? Very, very frustrating. And I understand it, which is one of the reasons I was frustrated with overtime restarts to a couple, uh, last year because we were having so many at the beginning of the year. It feels like the deserving driver was never winning the race. I kind of feel – I feel that for Martin Schurz Jr. Very, very frustrating. And I'm sure he's not feeling great after this, which is why he was so upset following the race. Um, the other driver is going to obviously be Kyle Larson. Led the second most laps tonight. Was really fast. Was able to finish in the third position. Solid run for Kyle Larson. Like I said, looked really fast at the start of the race. Faded a little bit. And at the end, Truex was just like a, a lightning bolt just flying by everybody. He flew by Kyle Larson after Larson beat him on pit road. So obviously Truex was faster than Larson. Uh, at, at, in the second half of the race, so there was no doubt about that. Uh, Denny Hamlin, I, I'm going to throw him in third. I don't think he was really anywhere close to, to Kyle Larson. I, I don't think he was close at all to Martin Tricks Jr., uh, but he was able to get the win, was able to hold off Martin Tricks Jr. Uh, you know, on the last two laps on the, in that overtime restart. So I'll give him that third position of the big three drivers of the day, big three cars of the day. 
Uh, let's go ahead and look at the, the entire top ten, right? I mean, I've talked about Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano able to get up there, get a solid second place finish. The thing that was interesting about Logano was he was trying to run like a little middle groove there. You notice that he wasn't quite on the paint like most drivers were. He was running a somewhat high line, uh, which was very interesting to see. Kyle Larson, like I said, got spun, caution makes that time back up on pit road after Wallace spun him and then finishes third. So uh, sort of interesting there. Truex, once again, dominant car of the day, finishing fourth. Chase Elliott, solid run for Chase Elliott today. I think I want to say he did lead at, at a very early portion of this race, or uh, maybe it was right after the start at green flag. But Chase Elliott, solid top five run uh, for him. Once again, this is a very long winless streak for the fan favorite Chase Elliott. Uh, we'll see if he can get over that hump, you know, back in the top three, leading laps, con continuing for wins like his Chevrolet Hendrick Motorsports teammates are, uh, but a solid top five finish tonight is a good place to start for him and Alan Gustafson. Christopher Bell, pit road speeding penalty on the second to last pit stop before the overtime restart. Christopher Bell thought he was out of the race, right? I think he went to 16th, might have been uh, on the lead lap, but if he was the last car on the lead lap or right down there with it, might have been a lap down at one point. But yeah, unfortunate for Christopher Bell that he got that pit road speeding penalty, was able to recover very nicely. I think at a track like this to recover, get all the way back up to six is a very nice uh, recovery on pit road. The only thing is, you know, we didn't get to see what Christopher Bell did, right? I mean, that's another Toyota driver. You see all the Toyotas running up front. We never really got to see what Christopher Bell could have done at the end of this race if he was up there. Never really was able to compare him to the leaders because of that pit road penalty, which is unfortunate. William Byron, solid run for him. I really like him and Rudy Fugel because tonight was not a good night for them. They were outside the top 10. I would say majority of the race. Uh, luckily, uh, was able to finish in the seventh position. So, you know, take what you can get, right? Get those points when you don't have them is a huge advantage. You look at some other guys like Kyle Busch, Joe Logano, they're losing points when they have them. So certainly roles reverse there, which is how you win championships. Brad Kozlowski, Chris Buescher, eighth and ninth. I talk about this a lot. It's so funny to me that these guys are always right the same on the racetrack. How many times do we see these guys finish one, two, or, or, or in this case, eighth and ninth? I mean, that happens so much. Uh, and, and I just like to mention it because these cars, these teams are working so well together. Chris Buescher, Brad Kay working so well together. That's why they're able to get decent results. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see. I think at some point when we get deeper in the summer portion, we're going to see both of these teams get wins. Um, Brad Kay and Chris Buescher. Tyler Riddick able to uh, salvage a solid top 10 day uh, after the overtime restart. But that's really it. That's all I want to talk about following this race to Richmond. We have another short track race next week at Martinsville. Not sure if I'll be in attendance for that yet or not. I want to be, but we'll see how things work out. But of course, that's it. Uh, like and subscribe if you like the video. Please share the video if you can. I do appreciate it. Uh, and of course, about Kyle Busch running 20th all night and finishing 20th. Uh, let's get rowdy.